Hey there, welcome back to this playlist on Tosca 2024. Now we are talking about all the latest features which has been recently introduced in Tosca. Now the next feature which I'm going to talk about is one of my favorite features which has been introduced in Tosca. And this is about the buffered array. Now, if you have worked in Tosca, you would know that we have got a, a way to buffer some values in our test steps. And then we can use this buffered values later in our test cases. So this buffer value used to be a single value, which means you can buffer uh, any particular value into a variable kind of thing. And uh, it is temporarily stored in that particular uh, buffered variable. And then you can use it uh, in any of your test steps. But you can only store one value into one buffer, right? Now Tosca has changed this particular concept. And this is specifically useful when you are working with tables, OK? So in tables, you will have a number of rows or columns, right? So what Tosca has done uh, is basically given you the ability to now store uh, different values into a buffer array, right? So you can now create an array of buffer values, and then you can iterate through that array. You can um, also get any particular value from that particular array and use it in your test case to either verify or if you want to use any particular um, element from that particular array. So this is the feature which has been introduced in Tosca, and I think it's super helpful. So let's see um, how we can use this particular feature. So let's go ahead and uh, open our workspace. Uh, as always, you have to be on the latest version of Tosca before trying to do this. So we have been working uh, in this 2024 folder and uh, I'm going to continue working on this. So let's go ahead and create our new test case, okay? And I'm going to call this buffer array. Now let's look at what we can use as an example, right? So for this, uh, I can use this obstacle uh, website, obstacle list website. And here you can see uh, on the first page itself, we have got a table, right? So these are, the, the list of all the different uh, obstacles, right? Um, and if I want to verify maybe a particular name of a particular obstacle from this table, either I can go and uh, select a particular column or a row if I know it, or I can use a constraint, right? So there are different ways of doing this, but uh, what if um, I want to store all the names uh, or all the IDs into an array. And then um, I want to uh, either iterate through the array or I want to grab a particular value from that array, right? So let's see how we can do this using a buffered array. So let's come back here. Um, I have already created a particular module for this. This is the obstacle list table. Okay, so I've captured this table inside this and uh, I'm going to use this uh, in my particular test case, right? So let's go and add this here and then let's come back to our test case. So we have got the table here, okay? Now, what I want to do is um, I want to use the name column, right, from the table. So I'm going to select the name column here and then uh, in the action mode, right? Instead of select, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the buffer. Now we can leave uh, the name of the buffer as name, okay? And what this will do is it will buffer all the values from this particular column and store it in this buffer, which is called the name, okay? So it will be a array of all the values which will be stored in this buffer. Okay, so it's a buffered array. So this is the first step where we are buffering uh, an array of different names from the table, right? So let's uh, call this buffer name column 
list. Okay, so this is uh, our step. And now, again, uh, we will add that particular module. This time around, I want to verify uh, what is there on the third uh, name or the third row, right? So I want to verify whether this is uh, not a table obstacle, right? So I want to verify that. And that I want to do uh, by using my buffered array. So my buffered array should have got all the names which are present on this table. So now um, what we will do is we will select the name column here, okay? And then inside the cell, uh, what we will do is we will put the cell number here. So we are trying to uh, grab the third cell, right, from the name column. And we want to verify this, that's correct. Now we have to use uh, an expression, which is the buffer expression, okay? So previously we used to use it uh, like the buffer expression and then we used to give the name of the buffer, right? We are going to do exactly the same, but now um, we have to add something else in the expression so that we can grab the third value from the array, okay? Or the third element from the array. So for that, I'm going to give the number. So it will grab the fourth uh, element from the array. Now I'll explain why it is four uh, and not three, okay? But uh, this is how you will write the expression, right? And when you do this, you will see that it is buffer of name and then it is grabbing this fourth element from this particular buffer, which is an array. So this will verify the third cell of this particular name column matches uh, with the element which uh, we are extracting from our buffered array, okay? So let's go ahead and first rename this particular step. So we are saying here verify name, okay? And then let's go ahead and complete this. And then we'll see while it is executing how it is capturing the buffer and how it is verifying it. So let's go ahead and execute this. Okay, so now uh, let's analyze the results and let's try to understand how this is working, okay? And uh, how this test case passed. So, in the first step, uh, when we are verifying the column list, right, uh, which is the name column, you will see uh, it will select this particular name column. And then in the log info, you will see the buffer with name has been set to value. And if I expand this, okay, so here you will see that uh, that particular buffer has got all the values from that particular column. Okay, um, and that includes uh, the column header. Now, ideally, I would like to have a particular way of um, removing the column header, but for now, uh, it is not there. So we'll try to work around that, right? So a name is the column header, and then uh, these are the values. So you can see all these values are from the that particular column, right? So it is grabbing all the values and putting it uh, inside the buffer. You can even verify uh, the pagination uh, values here, like one, two, three, four. These are all the different page links which are present in that particular column, right? So this is storing everything right here uh, in the form of an array of uh, different elements. And now if I want to verify anything from here, I can just um, reference to that particular element from this particular buffered array. So coming back here again, I want to verify the third element in that particular column. Uh, and I'm doing that. So here you can see the expected value is not a table and the actual value is also not a table. Now, uh, the reason I uh, used the element four uh, because of uh, the column header. Right. Since the column header is also stored uh, in the buffered array, 
So not a table is actually the fourth element in this buffered array. And that is the reason I used the fourth element uh, while I was verifying this particular element. So this is how you can use the buffer array. Now there are lots of other possibilities uh, which have opened up and it has actually uh, made it more simpler to verify a lot of elements uh, using the buffer, right? So now you can buffer um, an array of different elements and then you can either iterate through them or uh, you can verify any particular element from that array. Right. So instead of going through um, all the different elements uh, and buffering them separately, now I can buffer them together into a particular array. So I think uh, it's one of the best features which has been introduced uh, in the latest version of Tosca. And it will be very useful uh, in working with tables, but uh, it will also be useful in other places. That's all for this particular video. If you have any questions, then please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.